The contestants on The Biggest Loser, of course, lose dozens, if not hundreds of pounds in some cases. So there was this big study that lasted six years where the researchers followed the contestants from season eight to see what their habits were, whether or not they were gonna gain the weight back, what happened to their lives, how did it impact them? Now the researchers went into this not really knowing what the outcome would be, right? And what they found was actually pretty shocking and extremely devastating for those of you who are trying to lose weight or maintain your weight loss. What they found was that most of that season's 16 con contestants have regained much, if not all the weight they lost so arduously. Some even are heavier now. And it has to do with two main things, okay? It has to do with resting metabolism, which determines how many calories a person burns when at rest. When the show began, the contestants, uh, though hugely overweight, had normal metabolisms for their size, meaning they were burning a normal number of calories for people of their weight. When it ended, their metabolisms had slowly uh, or slowed radically, and their bodies were not burning enough calories to maintain their thinner sizes. So I didn't know this. I, I was under the assumption that if you exercise regularly, you eat properly, your metabolism will actually speed up. But when you lose a considerable amount of weight, it's actually the opposite. You actually have a slower metabolism and it becomes quite a challenge to maintain your weight or to continue losing weight. Now, a lot of these contestants would exercise, I'm not even kidding you, seven hours a day. Yeah. And they severely restricted their calories and that's how they were able to lose the weight that they lost. Once you return to normal life, it's impossible to keep up with that lifestyle and your body fights aggressively against that weight loss in the form of your metabolism and also hormones, which we'll get to in just a minute. Yeah. I live through this every day. Like, that's not a joke. I come from a family of obese people. My, I used to be a very, very fat person. I was pretty much obese when I was younger, and I lost a tremendous amount of weight in a very short period of time through pure dedication and hard work. I just basically stopped eating. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately... Anyone who's ever dieted knows there's a, there's such a concept called yo-yo dieting where you where you go up and down dramatically with your weight, and this is the reason because your resting metabolic rate gets comfortable at the current position it's in. Once you if you're eating 2,800 calories a day and you're fine with that, your body's maintaining that weight. As soon as you drop a tremendous amount of weight, your resting metabolic rate follows through with it. Now there are certain things that you can do. Uh, in order to keep it going as best as possible. One of the biggest, one of the most important factors that you need to take into consideration is um, muscle, uh, uh, is gaining muscle. Mm -hmm. Because your body, when trying to feed the muscle, will increase your resting metabolic rate. So that's literally one of the only things you can do. If you lose a dramatic amount of uh, weight, you're going to have to put on muscle. Otherwise, you're never going to be able to eat more then, or I mean, you're never gonna be able to eat a normal amount of food and maintain your current weight. Yeah, and the, the one thing that Anna mentioned at the start, which was very similar, and it's, it is something that is highlighted throughout this, is not a lot of people uh, would go into the detail or understand the biological side of it. Yes. And that's why it's almost a breath of fresh air to see this article when people are getting five minutes of fame by fat shaming people and screaming how lazy they are. Yes. When it actually, there's a biological reason behind it not every single reason is the exact same trust me i understand there is examples of some people maybe lazy and not want to make a change in health and that's their choice but fat shaming people when you don't really understand that there is biological circumstances that go into this there is proven statistics and it's needed studies like this are needed because those contestants which i think the show is absurd i never really enjoyed it anyway yeah um it gamifies losing weight it so does. it's like it's you're so tested dangerous. on exactly that's the that's the word there. It's dangerous. The expectations are dangerous. They're not sustainable. This these people are working out. You mentioned it seven eight hours a day, and then what happens when they go back to everyday life and they have to deal with bills and family and everything else? And their it's jobs. not sustainable. It's to be not able to work sustainable. That. And also, I love that you brought up the the issue of fat shaming because you're absolutely right. I think, as with people who are in governmental assistance. Uh, being stereotyped as lazy, mm -hmm. it's the same thing for people who are overweight. They're immediately cast off as lazy. Oh, they're probably not eating healthy, they're probably not exercising enough, but there are so many genetic factors or biological factors, physiological factors that play a role in whether or not we will lose that weight, whether or not we will maintain that weight loss, 
And it not only has to do with our metabolism, it also has to do with hormones. Now, when it comes to metabolism, though, keep in mind that when these contestants started gaining that weight back, their metabolic rate didn't really recover 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. As the years went by and the numbers on the scale climbed, the contestants' metabolisms did not recover. They became even slower, and the pounds kept piling on. It was as if their bodies were intensifying their effort to pull the contestants back to their original rate. Yeah. weight. Now, uh, the biggest loser uh, from that season was a gentleman by the name of Mr. Cahill, and apparently he was one of the worst off. He regained more than 100 pounds, um, his met metabolism slowed so much that just to maintain his current weight of 295 pounds, he now has to eat 800 calories a day, less than a typical man his size. Anything more turns to fat. Yeah. So look, one of the one of the really one of the important things that we haven't really touched on yet is education about this. That's okay? exactly what there are a bunch of great documentaries out there that you guys can go and watch. I think Fed Up is one of them. Uh, it talks about carb addiction and the FDA regulation that is not there for to protect and ensure that the citizens of America are healthy. Um, there's a lot of incorrect assumptions like carbs are bad for you or fats are good for you or fats are bad for you. These are all fads. In the end of the day, one of the things you guys all need to understand is Whatever diet you can stick to for the rest of your life, you should probably try doing that. And Even if you're really, losing weight in a slower uh, rate. And it's not really a diet. It's more a lifestyle change. Everything and you is guys a diet. have all heard that. But look, the point of this, Haas, is yeah, you can change your lifestyle. You can work out and eat right. But even doing that for some people is not enough, right? Yeah. So again, there's the metabolic rate, but let me finally get to the hormones that I've been talking about. Talk so about there's the a hormone. hormone called leptin, right? Mm, leptin. And it's the hormone that basically stops you from feeling hungry, yeah. right? And so when these contestants lost tremendous amounts of weight, their leptin levels decreased. In some cases, they were completely gone, right? So uh, they did not have uh, proper levels of this hormone and they were constantly hungry and they couldn't help it. So you have this hormone that's constantly making you hungry, you have a slow metabolic rate, and it's a recipe for disaster and you start packing on the pounds again. Look, I don't know what the solution is, right? This is a pretty devastating story and I'm sure a lot of you are like, okay, well then what does this mean, that we're doomed? No, you should still try to eat healthy and exercise, you should do your best to stay at a healthy weight. But I think the point of this is to make a very complex issue even more complex and make it evident to everyone. So you understand that those who are overweight are not there because they wanna be. You know, they're not necessarily there because they're lazy or made bad decisions. Some people have a genetic makeup that's different than yours. Yeah. And so try to be empathetic to their situation. Try to understand where they're coming from. Instead of being judgmental or calling them fat or making them seem like they're just lazy losers, understand that there are other complexities behind the scenes. Yeah, and you has talked about it as well, the education side of it, and it starts from youth, right? And I have had uh, the privilege of being on both sides of the world, and despite the fact that I don't think the Scottish and the United, King the United Kingdom's health system is as great as it could be, um, the school, the amount of uh, food that we are, I would say, encouraged to eat in uh, basically in school comparison to here is drastically different. The United States uh, and how they promote food for young students uh, in school and all the way throughout is pretty diabolical. Yeah. And how kids are often assumed yeah. that the faster option, yeah, because you might need to go and do your homework or you might need to go and do this and that, it's, it's sickening at times. I've been on a couple of uh, school campuses, whether you guys middle school or I don't, still can't yeah, keep up to do it with all the different levels of it. It's shocking. The, the, the obstacles that they have to go through to maybe get a healthier option yes. is ridiculous. And that's where it starts because genetics play a part in it, biology plays a part in it, but education is a huge part of it. The faster you can get into a routine and start to understand that these will have consequences on your own body, yes. the better you're going to be in the long run. Look, and the more you can adjust. There's also the issue your of your socioeconomic status. So mm -hmm. if you're poor and you don't have access to grocery stores that you know, have fresh produce. A lot of people live in areas and that it's don't have those types of grocery stores. They and produce is pound for pound more expensive than a bag of chips. It so is, in yes. the end of the day, it's much cheaper for you to feed your children with the shitty uh, food filled with fillers. Yeah. And one of the things I, I can't, I can't stress this enough, it blows my fucking mind that in America, 
pizza is considered a vegetable. Well, the it's tomato sauce a, is because considered vegetable. Because it has a tomato sauce in it. Yeah. It's considered a vegetable, and they feed that to your children. Yeah. How are you not pissed off about this? There's deals that uh, Pepsi and Coca-Cola have with schools so they can give sodas to your children at an early on age. It's ridiculous that the government continues to protect and cut deals with these massive corporations that basically poison our children from an early on age. That's why we got to get money out of politics, because the reason why they have those deals is because of the political clout that these corporations have. It's devastating.